All right. Today we will look into mid-journey parameters that were released with the release of version three. I am going to specifically look into three parameters, stylize, quality, and weights. So I have a mix of images here, but in the coming seconds and minutes, I will go in detail and explicate for you how you can navigate your way towards the image that you want to create. So let's start. Let's uh, let's start with the big news today. You know, uh, today I saw that, okay, uh, the server is getting really, really big. This is really big news. And, uh, you know, Discord is saying the Discord server now has more people than the official Fortnite and Minecraft Discord servers. So even this on its own, I think, uh, is a, is great news. Uh, I don't know much of. I know what Fortnite is. I don't know much about you know like the, the game. I know what Minecraft is, of course. Uh, but what's happening here is that uh, you know Fortnite is more about gaming. Uh, again, as far as I know, I think people are kind of like turning into something that is uh, purely related with creativity. And it's pretty active, right? So it's not really passive, like you're not. I mean, gaming is also active, but this this is this takes some you know effort from people to sit down, type prompts, try to make their prompts better, and have a great visual exercise on what they are trying to create. So it takes you know it takes some effort. I know. I mean, I know it creates you know the images in a really fast and easy way, but still, I think it's more active than gaming. So I'm really happy to see that. That's the good news. The bad news is, you know, for the people who have been, uh, you know, who've got the uh, access to Mid Journey and haven't uh, been using it, they will be kicked out. Because uh, the the very interesting thing is it, that there's a which I didn't know is that uh, there's a, a limit on each Discord server, so you cannot have more than one million people. So meaning Mid Journey. Uh, you know, surpassed uh, Minecraft and Fortnite servers, but at the same time, you know, it's reaching the cap of like 1 million people. Uh, very exciting again to me, and I know that this tool is, you know, uh, is in development, which means that it's going to get better over time. Uh, and, you know, community uh, people like you, maybe people like myself and anybody using this and sharing the images they create, are going to contribute that change, uh, that uh, improvement, hopefully moving into the future. So with that, let me move back to you know my subject today, which is again looking into these parameters. Uh, yeah, at the beginning, you know, I shared a, a grid of images which were showing uh, the images that I created using this simple prompt, which is data painted on sports car. And actually, I, I try to keep the uh, the prompt as simple as possible so that we humans can, you know, uh, track what's really happening as we change the parameters. Uh, before we go into deep into detail, so let's review, you know, there are more than three parameters, of course, in the tool now, but I'm looking into uh, these uh, three parameters specifically that I'm going to talk about. Uh, the first one is stylize, uh, which is uh, used by double dash and S, and then you put a number at the end. So the number uh, range for now is from 625 to 60,000. And stylize is uh, used in an interesting way here. I will talk about it at the end in more in detail, but uh, essentially what happens is if you put a number closer to 625, you get uh, images that are more literal, meaning, you know, if you're typing a car and if you are, you know, using the stylized at 625, you get something that looks like a car more uh, than, you know, putting a higher number. If you go closer to 60,000, you know, you, you almost never know what you're getting, right? So it's it gets like super abstract. So let's say, you know, it's almost generating ideas that are closer to the, the prompt, the, the word that you have, but not necessarily super, super close. So 60,000 would give you, you know, thinking about the cars, and not the tires, but maybe the road and the 
trees on the side of the road and so on and so forth. So in a way, it's helping, you know, like the, keeping the imagination open and being very, very abstract and far from the, far from the original idea. Okay. So if we go, if we keep going here, uh, the, the second parameter is, uh, is quality. So quality is, I think it's, it's a more like a literal, like better choice than stylized, I would say, as a prompt. Uh, because quality refers to the intricacy, like the details in the image, right? So how high the quality of the image is, like pixel-wise, right? So let's say if you have a lower number, let's say a detail that you have would take uh, maybe, you know, let's say five pixels wide, so it would never go lower than five pixels, right? So which is going into like really these intricate small details. But if you bump the uh, quality up, then, then you're going to start seeing very, very kind of like uh, thin uh, lines and, you know, uh, more uh, like, let's say, uh, separated or segregated colors and so on and so forth. So what I'm saying is, you know, a couple of people shared this a, day, a couple of days ago. Again, some people were referring to quality number five which was removed as I was uh, preparing these, these images for you. So the maximum quality at that time was two. And for now, uh, although, it, it, I'm, although, although here I'm showing it as a range, uh, you know, it, 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 is, it may be taking, uh, you know, specific numbers, not all the numbers in between. And the last one I'm going to mention is weight. I haven't seen anybody using like you know minus ten thousand or ten thousand uh, is the uh, is the weights. Uh, but this is a very good selection uh, for the parameter name, right? So the the weight pretty much in in visual you know studies too, weight is how much attention you pay to an object or to an to an area uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, what you do here is that, let's say, again, working on the cars, if you put lots of weight on a car, meaning keeping that number high, uh, you know, is going to help you, let's say, signify uh, that parameter or, or signify that object or the, or the you know, uh, the, the content, signify the content, if you will, uh, by using a higher number for the weight, right? So that's the idea. And if you want to have something Again, but you don't want it to be uh, super significant, super visible uh, in the composition. You would you would use a, a lower uh, weight value. Okay, so with that, let's look into this 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 flow chart. So in this flow chart, what I'm doing is I'm starting uh, with the very basic image. Basic meaning I'm not using any parameters at all, uh, and seeing what comes out, and then you know change the parameters. Uh, step by step uh, to see what happens next. And the nice thing here, I think, is that, you know, my progress, you can see from left to right, right? So if you look into this PDF page from left to right, you're going to see uh, what I have changed in these steps. And if you're going like bottom or up, it means that I'm changing uh, that parameter, which is indicating this row from left to right again. All right. So uh, I hope this helps you track uh, all, all the images. So if we start with the uh, with the, the first one, uh, so that says uh, that's the data painted on sports car, right? As we see here, this is the first image, uh, and no parameters at all. It's just using the default values here, uh, and that's what I get out of it. Okay, so fairly okay, right? So uh, this this looks like a car. They all look like cars. The tires are great. You know the colors are fine. And, uh, you know, data in mid-journey, the, the, the algorithm is uh, tending to, uh, you know, this, like, uh, describing data with colors, like, you know, uh, different colors and so on. So that's actually what humans have been doing. So that's not a surprise. So this is what we get. And the next step, uh, so data painted on sports car, again, what we are doing is increasing the uh, the style number actually decreasing the style number to 700, which means it's it's increasing how literal uh, the algorithm is supposed to understand the car. So if you look at this uh, example, we're going to see this is a number which is really close to the lower bound of this range, which is 625, right? So it's it's drawing cars which should literally look like cars, 
Uh, and, you know, there's maybe a little more like 3D effect compared to these ones. But here, let's say, although this looks like a, you know, like an art, uh, like a poster art, uh, this looks more like a, you know, like it, it has more 3D shadows and so on and so forth. Uh, and again, you know, in the three quarters uh, view, you know, things are changing. It's, it's, it's getting a little more uh, little and real here. So, and then the next step, I did two things, right? So one was, again, oh, you now I said, okay, I'm getting, you know, slightly different image, which is which is close enough to the pre previous one. What if we increase uh, the style number? Again, as I was talking, you know, hitting the number hitting 60,000, uh, you know, makes the, the algorithm create an, you know, super abstract image. And here I'm increasing the number to 55,000, and that's exactly what I'm getting, right? So the, the prompt still has the car, and the sports car and the data and painted and so on. So we're getting lots of, let's say, abstract results. Here, what I'm doing is, as I kind of like staggered down, what I'm doing is I'm adding Q2, which is the maximum quality or which was the maximum quality that was allowed at the time uh, that I was creating these images. And you would immediately see uh, that intricate details are kind of like being uh, added to the, uh, to the images. And you know, I have the, almost the same, you know, like front view uh, for the car three quarters for this one. But look at that, you know, the, this is this is almost like paint kind of like gripping down and, it's, you know, it doesn't have uh, that many of details. Whereas this guy has, you know, almost as if it's kind of somebody taped them, you know, painted in detail. So we see that Q2 uh, is affecting uh the, the the level of detail in my mind that's how i would kind of uh you know uh name name that parameter here and of course it's taking more time right so if you increase the quality it means that uh, you are making the algorithm work harder to generate uh to work on pixels group groups harder right so let's say here it's working on you know it's kind of like more spongy, like taking a sponge and, you know, like painting with it. Whereas here, you know, it's going like more, more pixel by pixel or more like taking into smaller pixel groups in the control concentration and creating these, you know, let's say intricate details. Okay. So the next one, you know, here I'm jumping into weight. So, and in the first try I'm saying, okay, let me pay more attention to data than a car in my prompt. So, Sorry about that. Okay, let's go and open the PDF again. This is the nice thing about, you know, doing this in one go, getting excited and getting something that I really like. Okay, PDF is back again. Let's make this full screen and let's go back to our slide that we were looking at. Okay, great. So what's happening here is uh, I'm asking the algorithm to pay more attention to data part than the car part. So it's like, in my mind, instead of using these like huge numbers here, I'm saying, okay, pay four times more attention to the to data than than the car, right? So, and actually, it's creating something along those lines, right? So I'm seeing these these like you know data data painted cars or just data, and then. Then I also start seeing, you know, like uh, kind of humans around. Remember that we still have uh, the style at 700, which is a very low value. So I'm, I'm trying to make algorithm, okay, do exactly what I say. And uh, it's doing the car, as I say, but data is so abstract, right? So it's, it's trying to make data. But then again, you know, some like like human figures, uh, and then maybe this is a cell phone. I don't know, you know, like some other stuff is happening. I really like these images. It is, you know, those ideas kind of like the AI is being challenged. The algorithm is being challenged. Okay, he wants something literal, uh, which is, let's say, uh, like the car. And then he was something uh, more abstract, which is like the data. I'm not saying, you know, the AI knows what abstract is or if, if whether or not data uh, is abstract, but these are the results that we're getting. Immediately after, what I'm doing is I'm increasing the weight on data uh, so then, you know, instead of four times now, the attention, the weight is like 12 times the car. 
keeping uh, the same parameters. And what you would see is the car is disappearing even more. And again, in the next step, what I'm doing this time is switching the parameters, right? So I'm, I'm putting the weight one for data and I'm using the weight 12 for car. So pay 12 times more attention to car than data and then keeping the parameters the same. And I think you see the jump, right? So it's jumping from this uh, minority report, report to SK, you know, images to more like a, you know, like a painted car. Uh, and I did this like twice, you know, just to see if it is yielding similar images, uh, just using the same prompt. And I am kind of, you know, convinced that it is. And from here on, what we are doing is, if you remember what the first horizontal row was, which is here, it's stylized. I'm changing the stylus parameter from S700 to S7000. So this is going to allow uh, the image to become more abstract uh, compared to the test I had here. And still keeping the attention on the car, the weight on the car, still keeping the quality at two, which is the maximum again, uh, but enabling, you know, helping uh, the algorithm go a little crazier uh, or, you know, having a free, let's say, um, you know, uh, let's say meandering uh, as it creates the images. The next step, I'm pushing the stylized to 57,000, which is close to the maximum of uh, 60,000 or 60, oh, yes, 60,000. And it's creating these, you know, like clouds and, you know, uh, Dagenheim as, you know, facade colors and uh, sunset sky and so on and so forth. And then again, pulling the number back to 17,000, uh, which is larger than 7,000. And, you know, it's like, kind of like, like these images. So it's really, it really matters, I would say. You know, these, these parameters were thought really well. And in the next step from 17,000, I'm jumping to uh, 27,000. And again, you know, I'm losing, you know, I start getting sky. I'm getting maybe a tire, which is becoming, you know, like this. Uh, the, the moon uh, shape and so on and so forth. At that point, I'm jumping, I'm changing the weights. So the car weight was still 12 times uh, the data weight. So I'm making it one to five, keeping all the parameters the same. And this time, of course, I'm losing the car more. So I think this is really important to remember. Uh, so there are two parameters that I'm playing with here. One is the, uh, one is the stylized, which is the level of abstraction. And the other one uh, is the weights. And uh, just, just by changing uh, the weight here uh, from the car, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been losing the car by increasing the styling. And now by reducing the weight, I'm losing the car again, right? So that's what I'm trying to say. And from there on, I'm jumping to, uh, again, you know, maybe uh, less uh, stylized uh, version, changing style number again and uh, keeping the weight the same as here. So again, like here, from here to there, I would say, you know, not much is changing in terms of car. The car is kind of like still lost, you know, even if it has the weight of five, uh, which means that, you know, the styling has a, a, a heavier effect here. And the next step, I'm doing something interesting. I'm, I'm reducing the quality to 0 0.25, which is the, Lowest value, meaning it's going to kind of like do this water coloring and so on, you know, jumping many pixels and losing the details. And I'm not getting, I'm not getting any car at all. I think, you know, it's kind of lost. And then in the last step, what I'm doing is I am going uh, back to the number 7,000 for styling, which means, okay, I want to see more of the cars, but keeping the quality at 0 0.25, which again, uh, you know, reduces the, uh, the the intricacy uh, and the detail. So you're getting like something like pop art here, you know, and the data to car weight ratio is uh, one to five. So you end up getting cars. Okay, so this is, this is it, right? So hopefully this is gonna help you find your way as you're playing with the images, but why is this important? Why, uh, you know, why is this important and how actually it can help you uh, itchy what you're trying to do. And maybe a little bit of discussion about, oh, whoa, AI can generate all of these. And, uh, you know, do we need, you know, artists or, you know, uh, concept, uh, visual artists that develop concepts or games, movies, and so on and so forth. Actually, yes. Right? So uh, 
do not worry. I think this is an interesting tool. A lot of people, so the service is reaching 1 million people, millions of more people will use this tool uh, for creative purposes, and it's just going to make everybody's life better. Uh, so here how it goes. You would remember all these images one by one. Uh, if you uh, if you watch the you know the video as I went through uh, the, the the images that I generated, so and if you if you pick uh, you know uh, these samples, you can see at some point I said like minority report esque, you know, uh, you would kind of like build bridges between these images and some like you know the, the concept uh, of a movie or or an art artwork. So this image, for instance, somebody working in Minority Report probably would, you know, uh, follow this path, meaning if we go one back, this path, which is here. I don't know how long that it would take for this person to kind of like find images like these ones. But once, you know, he or she found them, I think, uh, you know, uh, the person would continue with those right here to work on the Minority Report again, movie, whereas somebody working on Blade Runner, right, in comparison, would probably go with something like this. You know, I just put a very nice scene, uh, screenshot from that movie as well. Uh, and again, if we go back to our grid or matrix, that image is pretty much here. You know, again, like in my, if I, if I were that person working on this movie, it would take a while for me to start with this initial image and then, you know, find my way and get here. And I'm like, okay, finally I'm getting something. So I would, I would explore around that area. And actually that has been the case with the SGAN, you know, uh, st style uh, uh, development with machine learning. Uh, and so on and so forth, right? So you, you explore the latent space and you, you you find something that you like and you start kind of like looking around it, which is, by the way, very, very, very similar to, you know, the conventional design process because, again, you have ideas in the conventional design process. You come up with something, you come up with a visual idea, you sketch something and you like it and you just kind of like keep going with that. I included two more examples uh baby driver yes i know it's a uh, more like a pinkish tone but again just as a style if you remember the opening scene that like red pinkish you know car depending on how you how you kind of like you use the light if you use the yellow light it becomes you know pinkish otherwise it's a red car as far as i remember so let's say you know this uh would go with that movie and one final thing I would like to share is BMW, you know, uh, has been collaborating with artists for many years now. I don't know for how long, but, you know, for decades, I would say. So this is an uh, eight series that is, uh, or M1, I'm trying to remember, I think it was M1, painted by uh, Andy Warhol. And uh, there are a bunch of these cars uh, BMW has in different museums. Uh, uh, and, you know, they collaborate with uh, painters to, you know, just kind of like uh, have these really nice piece of artwork with four wheels and great uh, driving, let's say, uh, performance. And these images somehow reminded me that. And, if, you know, if I were exploring uh, some ideas within those lines, I, I would use, you know, those images. And those came around, you know, of course, if you go to the beginning, you would see lots of like pop art style stuff, you know, really, really simple. But again, like that kind of stuff emerged when I use specific, uh, let's say, uh, parameters. Uh, weight for uh, data is one, the weight for car is 12. And then I use 700 for stylizing and uh, two for the quality and so on and so forth. Great. So hopefully, you know, this, this kind of like convinces you, I hope, uh, these, these tools are not much different than, you know, like parametric modeling and, you know, rendering and animating that we have been doing for decades and decades again, 20 years, 30 years, you know, like you, can, you can go back uh, 50 years, 60 years and so on. So I don't think things are, they, they are more colorful and fast, but essentially I don't think uh, much is changing. A uh, couple of notes on uh, mid-journey, uh, again, these, these parameters and how they really 
and named these, the, the terminology, right? So after playing with it uh, by, by using these terms, I think a couple of things could have been slightly different, right? So in my mind, style, because style, when we refer to art, especially visual and artistic styles, they mean something, right? So if I say like cubism, it, it has a pointillism. And if I refer, you know, some, some, some painters, uh, Michelangelo and so on and so forth, uh, we refer to uh, the, the visual qualities and composition and shapes and colors somebody uh, used on purpose. Whereas what's happening with the stylized uh, comment here, I understand, I understand the intention, but level of abstraction is a better word here. So uh, we could use like, you know, LA maybe, <laughs> like level of abstraction. So keeping the number at, you know, 625 is make it uh, as literal again as possible, keeping the abstraction to the uh, minimum. Whereas the other side of the spectrum is kind of like push the abstraction. Quality, again, I'm having a little bit of problem with quality too. I understand what, again, developers mean, but in my mind, it's not the quality, but the intricacy uh, or the detailing of the image, uh, you know, increases as you increase this number, right? So the quality is, again, making the algorithm to work more rigorously in pixel groups, areas, zones, shapes, almost to the pixel, right? So if you increase the number. So, and also it's taking so much more time compared to making a more abstract, you know, like more, let's say, uh, ambiguous image, if you will. That's why probably they are not using or they will not be using quality level five for a while because it's probably you know making the GPUs go crazy uh, as they are trying to create those images. Uh, so I would use maybe intricacy for that. It's not a bit, you know the best option I think, but uh, it still uh, is okay. And the last thing that I'm going to share, like weight is weight. So that I think that works great. So because again, as I mentioned, weight mathematically and visually, I think it it makes so much sense. So. With that, okay, so I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pilot something, test an idea. I prepared this PDF for the sake of this video on, right? So, and I'm like, I'm, I'm playing with these images and so on and so forth. And uh, beyond that, of course, I'm gonna use it probably as teaching material, but this may also help you, right? So you're seeing it in, in this video and I want you to use it, right? So I would like to share this with you. And for sharing, uh, I'd like to test a couple of ideas. So here is what we will do. If you are not following me yet on YouTube, let's put it that way, uh, let's do that, okay? And you can do the same on LinkedIn. And then shoot me a note, okay? So you can send me a note over LinkedIn uh, if you have an account. If you don't have an account, Maybe you can reach me over uh, Instagram, okay? So once you follow and ping me, I know over LinkedIn I can just send you the PDF and files, so that 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 will be the easiest way. Uh, so you can receive this file, and once you receive it, the cool thing is, uh, my channel is going crazy now. The cool thing is, uh, all these icons have live links, okay? So if you want to keep following me, well, that's up to you. I'm going to keep sharing materials uh, over all these four channels as much as I can moving forward. And the nice thing is, it's, you can also share this PDF with other people. I'm totally fine. Just email them. And, you know, if, you're, if they are interested in seeing more about me and learning more about computational design, uh, they can also check these links as well. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it helps you play with Midjourney. And if you still don't have an account in Midjourney, there are several tools already, as you know. One is Dolly, and there will be more computers moving forward. So you know, don't worry about it if you don't have them. One day you will be playing with this, and I think it's gonna move really, really fast. Meaning you will be, you will have an app which is doing this for free very soon in very near future. 
So with that, thanks for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe and ask for this PDF so I can send it to you. And then again, please share this information with whomever you think could benefit from it. Thanks a lot.